And the question that I have been asking, are we being good ancestors? It's a cliche that most people don't think about the future. At least half of adults think about the future if only about making a better life for their kids. Those who step back a little bit from that are able to think of their kids as descendants, uh, which means they include their grandchildren, their great-grandchildren, and it spreads throughout the world a hundred years from now. Uh, the world is going to contain your descendants. So the future then starts to become very important. The Jonas Salk's good ancestor principle starts to become very important if people just let themselves step back. And the purpose of this gathering, this uh, meeting, is to step a couple of steps back and try to encompass what it would take, what are our strengths, and what's, what are the problems that Jonas Salk raised and that we're still grappling with. Even Dr. More Jonas Salk, who my generation and my parents and my children's will surely always revere as the brilliant medical scientist whose pioneering research effectively eradicated infantile paralysis as the literal scourge of this nation. And so Jonas Salk had, though gaining the opportunity to have us listen so respectfully to the larger themes he would develop in the decades to follow, as his plea that we be wise and good ancestors. Dr. Sork, I really am delighted to have you here with me today. See you again. And it, 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 it is, of course, a subject to examine what you really meant by uh, being a wise ancestor, a good ancestor. Well, I'm sure that <clears throat> just as we look back uh, into the past uh, to those who have preceded us, uh, we recognize that some of those who have gone before have been wiser than others. And the question that I have been asking in recent years, amongst others, uh, is, are we being good ancestors? And I pose that question uh, because I believe that the future generations will look back upon us and judge us as to whether we have been wise or whether we have been profligate and wasteful and destructive of the opportunities for their future, as well as the future of generations to come. With the, the whole notion of having a positive future pulling you forward, as opposed to the problems of the past uh, pushing you away from them. I have the impression that the new generation of young people are coming upon the scene with a sense of ancestorhood, and with more wisdom at an earlier age than was evident before. I think this comes about as a matter of necessity, almost as if there is something innate, something inherent in us. So I think to be good ancestors, what we need to do are, is find ways that reward, create immediate rewards for introducing systemic change, but not from top down, but from grassroots up. What my hope is that we can find some way to fulfill the biological potential, if you like, the destiny that exists in each of us, and find ways and means to provide such opportunities for everyone. I love Tom's introduction on we want to be drawn by uh, the wonderfulness of a future rather than, you know, driven by the horrible problems that seem to be all over the place. If you have the right poetic and, and, and imaginative and artistic way of expressing things, way of understanding things, then you begin to experience the scientific description of the world as infinitely rich and exciting and sensory.
at the moment there are about 4.7, 4.8 billion people on the face of the earth, and someday there'll be 10 or 11 billion people on the face of the earth. Uh, each one is not out there hunting and gathering. In lieu of that, it becomes necessary to maintain a population of this size, to push the frontiers of science and technology as far as possible. We're moving into a, a century where there are some truly fundamental threats facing us, some of which are our own creation, some of which are just the, uh, the emergent results of, of reasonable actions along the way. Um, and nearly all of these problems are problems that require a long-term perspective to resolve. The higher the fear level, the closer in you think about the future, and that is your child's next meal. And the closer in toward the tribe you define who is a human being. Fear levels go down. These horizons go out until you reach the point where it becomes a process of inclusiveness. Uh, when things get bad enough, then something happens to correct the course. And it's for that reason that I speak about evolution as an error-making and an error-correcting process. And if we can be ever so much better, ever so much slightly better at error-correcting than at error-making, then we'll make it. We are the product of the process of evolution. And in a sense, we have become the process itself. Our human potential is best evoked by an environment which brings forth the best in us. I'd like to see us as a tribute to good ancestorhood. Create media platforms, media outlets that are uplifting, uh, that energize what's working so that other people can copy it, build on it, add to it. Fundamental roadblock to global, uh, to a positive global future. We get caught up in anticipation and we forget the partner of anticipation, which is resiliency. We have to build a civilization that's so resilient that our kids can roll with the mistakes that we're making right now and that society will be robust enough to survive our mistakes. Think of each of us as a cell performing a different function, a different role. And if you would see it that way, then you'd say that there's a place for everyone. Of course, this has just been a snippet of some of the ideas that were passed around at the workshop, which is just the drop in the ocean of the great ideas going on uh, out there. But we're hoping that people who view this will decide to spark their own conversations, invite friends, and, and take part in this worldwide discussion of what it takes to be good ancestors.